If you want to start feeling the love from Google and get your website to start ranking in uh, the search engines, you're going to need some backlinks. So today we're covering backlinks for beginners and we're starting right now. If you want to transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Wes McDowell, a web strategist for The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, it's the only way we're gonna get to hang out on a regular basis, and I can teach you everything I know to make your website as amazing as possible. So go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. When it comes to getting your site ranked on Google searches, uh, the trendy advice of the day, everyone just says, you know, create great content which is great and you should be creating great content, but just having great content in and of itself is only gonna get you so far. Um, getting backlinks from other websites is still a huge uh, ranking factor for Google. It basically signals to Google and all the other search engines uh, that your site is actually good enough to warrant sharing. And when you start looking at the history of backlinking, there was a lot of really spammy things that people used to do with private blog networks and these kind of things that just Google started really devaluing all those kind of backlinks and they've gotten to a better place where now everything is much more earned and they're looking at all these different signals that go with backlinks. So what you really want to focus on are white hat techniques, uh, which are basically by the book and the way Google wants you to do it so that you never end up getting penalized by Google, which can really suck and it can take you a long time to kind of get back into their good graces if you've, uh, if you've fallen off. So everything I tell you today is gonna to be purely white hat that'll never get you penalized and will keep you rising through the ranks hopefully. Now I should mention before we get started that some of these techniques are going to rely on you having good quality content on your site first because a lot of times it's much harder to get people to link to your homepage or a product page or a service page, they're much more likely in a lot of cases to link to a great article or a great video. You're just gonna get many more people to say yes to link to a great article or video on your site rather than a product page. But the good news is any link you get to any page on your entire website is going to benefit your entire website. So today I'm gonna to show you five of my favorite ways to get these backlinks and tell Google that your business is the one that they should be pushing to the top of your customers' searches. And I will be saving my favorite for last, so be sure to stick around for that. So my first tip may not be surprising, but I'm gonna get into some really interesting ways of doing this and to really up your chances of getting it, of making it work for you, and that is guest posting. So if you don't know what this is, Basically, you are writing blog posts for other people's blogs, and then they are linking back to your site in the author bio. And the way this usually works is you find relevant blogs that are in your niche, and then you reach out to the blog owners and you pitch them your idea. Now, there are a few problems with this. Over the past few years, blog owners have been getting inundated with really spammy blog post requests. I have a blog on my site, I get these all the time, and I pretty much ignore 99% of the requests I get. And that's mostly because they come from these really unreputable article farms that really only are looking for a link and they're really not interested in writing a good quality article. Which leads to the next problem, which is it's really hard to know sometimes which of the blogs, you may find a blog that is in your industry, uh, but how do you know they actually take guest posts anymore because a lot of them including my blog we don't take them anymore just because of all those really spammy requests we always get so i'm going to help you tackle each of these problems one at a time first to find those blogs that actually do still accept guest posts here's what you're going to do so first find someone in your industry who writes a lot of guest posts um, i suggest finding them on twitter and then just copy the url of the headshot they use in their profile photo and then paste that url into a Google reverse image search. Then the results will all be pages where that photo appears, otherwise known as their guest posts around the web. Because every time they write a guest post, that image is usually gonna be showing up in the bio section. So that's a really cool way to find your opportunities, but so how do you pitch them your idea in a non-spammy way? Just be a human being about it. Just don't try to take shortcuts 
and write a really templatized email to everybody. Make sure every time you reach out to a blog owner, it's personal and you're actually pitching a couple ideas of articles. And that's really important. So don't just say, hey, do you mind if I write an article for you? Say, hey, I've got these two or three ideas and here's what they are. Would you like to see a draft of any of them? All right, next up we have link roundups. So what that is, is uh, you know a lot of blogs around the web will like to uh, link to good quality content and they'll usually do that periodically. Maybe they'll have a weekly roundup or a daily roundup or a monthly where they basically say, hey, these are the links we liked best this week. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just go to Google and type in a search like this. Type in your keyword phrase or your industry plus link roundup or plus roundup or best of or this week, this month, etc., and just kind of find those opportunities based on those searches. Once you find the right websites, you're just gonna reach out in a very similar way as I talked about for guest posting. You're just gonna reach out to the blog owner with a really simple email. And I actually recommend using this sample script which I'm actually going to leave in full in the description below. So as you can see, it's not pushy and it complements their work. And I should say, anytime you're gonna reach out to a blog owner, do a little bit of homework first and make sure you're sending the email to the right person and you actually use their name. Because as someone who gets these kind of pitches a lot for my own blog, I can really tell you how big of a turnoff it is when it's written to whom it may concern or sometimes I get just a random name that no one even works here by that name. So do a little bit of homework and make sure you're writing to the right person. All right, number three on the list are links from podcasts. So podcasts are becoming more popular than ever before. And the cool thing about them is there really is a podcast for everything. Even, you know, so-called boring niches if you find yourself in, in one of those. And they all need content on a weekly basis or however often they produce. And most of these podcasts are actually interview based and they're looking for experts who can come on and talk at length about a certain subject. So how does this translate into a link for you? Uh, so basically if you were to go on a podcast, they're going to usually link back to your website in the show notes from their website. And the cool thing about this is they'll usually link to just about any page you want them to, including a homepage, or a service or a product page. So if you have an area of expertise, and I bet you do, uh, all you really need to do is go to iTunes and just do a, a simple keyword search for podcasts in your niche. And when you find them, they always have a link to their website. So you can go directly there. And on their website, they almost always have a contact page. So get in touch with them and just pitch yourself and pitch your idea. Now I recommend a few things here. I definitely recommend listening to at least one episode so that you have something you know, a little more personal to bring up or to compliment or to comment on that's really gonna make your email pitch stand out much more. And along those same lines, I definitely recommend subscribing to their podcast, giving it a five-star rating, and then letting them know that in the email. And then let them know that you think you would make a great guest to talk about fill in the blank. So the trick is to make it specific. And what I would recommend is look at the list of episodes they have to see what they've already covered and where, what blind spots you could go in and fill in with a topic that you really know something about. And I should say you probably don't want to go after the biggest podcasts out there to start. They probably have a lot more competition for guests. So go after, you know, smaller ones to start. And then once you have a few interviews, then you can start bringing that to the table for the bigger fish uh, to get better and bigger links as you go forward. Okay, and along these same lines, uh, you can be a go-to source for media outlets. Because you know, it's one thing to get links from smaller websites, but it's quite another to get them from the big boys. You know, New York Times, Forbes, Huffington Post. And it sounds hard to get those, right? Well, it's not always as hard as you think. What if I told you that there's a website out there whose only job is to connect experts with journalists and bloggers that are looking for sources? Well, that website exists and it's called helpareporter.com. Just sign up as a source, uh, fill out a simple profile that indicates your areas of expertise, and you'll start getting emails about articles that are looking for sources. 
Just start responding to the ones that you think you can add value to and see who responds. Now this isn't a slam dunk. You may have to actually start responding to um, a few of these before you get any response back. But as long as you respond in a professional and polite way, uh, you'll probably start getting some really reputable backlinks just for providing a written response to a specific question. I actually got a link from the New York Times uh, this very way. Okay, and that brings us to my favorite method of getting backlinks. And this is my favorite because rather than creating a bunch of articles or a bunch of different kinds of content or going on a bunch of podcasts, you basically create one really good piece of content and then you spread that around the web. And I'm talking about mini multimedia guest posts. So here's what you do. You basically have to create one really great piece of content. It can be a video, it can be an infographic, or even a podcast. Then you pitch a bunch of different blogs in your niche that content. So in that email, you're gonna link directly to that piece of content, you know, the video or the infographic, but then you're also going to offer to write a unique mini post to accompany it. You know, this is a great scalable way to get a lot of backlinks from one piece of content, then basically rewrite the same mini article a bunch of different ways so that it ends up being unique to each individual blog that posts it. I did this a few years back with this infographic and I had it published on around 50 different blogs around the web. And if you wanna create an infographic but you're not a designer, that's fine. All you need to do is really find a good article or piece of content to base it on you know, where's the information coming from? And then you can usually hire a designer for, you know, around 100 to $250 who will actually take that content and bring it to life for you. I'd recommend just going to the Envato Studio website and just typing in infographics in the search bar and you'll find a bunch of really talented designers to do this for you. And if you really want to up the positive responses, you know, the yeses you get to this, I would actually recommend spending a little bit more and hiring a designer to create an animated infographic. These just look way cooler and the novelty of it is going to result in more people interested in posting it. And the good news here is you can probably make it a little less involved and shorter if it's animated. Okay, and one last bonus tip here, if all of this sounds good, but maybe you don't quite have the time to be building all these backlinks yourself, it might actually make more sense for you just to outsource your link building efforts. Uh, there's a company I use called The Hoth that does really great work, and they start at around $50 for some really basic link building, and they go up to a several hundred dollars for more advanced, but they do a really good job. I've been using them for a few years now uh, with some really great results. So I'm gonna put the link to The Hoth in the description below. All right, but now I wanna hear from you and I wanna know which of these tactics are you excited to start using in 2019 to start building up some really great backlinks to your website? I wanna know which one, or if you have any other tips that I've missed, uh, please leave those in the comment section below as well. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on any future videos, so just click the circle icon right over here to subscribe. And if you haven't accessed my free mini course, how to guarantee website ROI yet, you're gonna find that by clicking this box right over here. It's a good one, I think you'll like it. All right guys, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End. I'll see you in the next video.